previously to start, I would like to express my gratitude for accepting this presentation. And also I would like to know that I am the, I'm representing a, a researcher of a very long names group. <laughs> In, but in this occasion, uh, it's a very uh, an inter and multidisciplinary team on which I am doing the remote sensing approach to this historical period, which is history, modern history. No? Uh, as you may know, I am from Spain, of course, but uh, my research area is located south of the Iberian Peninsula, concretely in the province of Jaén, and more specifically studying the Sierra Morena region, which is spanned all along the north of the Andalusia region. But more concretely, I'm going to focus on this region, this concrete point here, because it's an area where uh, Charles III uh, created a new population. Uh, this area were unpopulated till the moment, and Charles III uh, thought that was very important to take into consideration or to create population and new communication route. Due to this is the area, the main access area to the south of the Iberian Peninsula. So the, the main aim to this new population uh, was to populate and create new communication routes. Uh, this process has been studied in an ongoing project which is called Proximo and which is the base of the several projects that I'm going to explain here and um, with which I want to, to express or to demonstrate the combination of aerial archaeology, remote sensing in modern history times. The Proximo project uh, as I said, it is focused on the study of this process of new population, but in a comparative manner. And the first one, taking into account the Bauban's 45 cities, also the repopulation of Algeciras, which is Algeciras, it is located here in this point, here in Spain. Also, with new population in Mediterranean minor island, since the very beginning of the 17th century, and also the translation of new population after Calabria Messina earthquake at the end of the 18th century. This, um, the approach to carry out this research is not that only um, taking into account the test, the writing test or the achieve. In fact, uh, it's a very, um, a very inter and multidisciplinary methodology. As you can see here, the aerial and field archaeology is very, is very present in all the development of the project. And here we use satellite imagery, multispectral one. In this case, I want to, to mark that multispectral imagery. Uh, I named that like that because I use a multispectral camera over a drone. So, also LiDAR data, drone made of the photography, historical orthophotography also, and archaeological prospection. Everything combined into a GIS environment and with the creation of a 3D visualization. And of course, the written test and historical cartography that made the base, the historical context of the data that we are going to, to provide. Well, regarding this inter and multidisciplinary project, uh, there are several projects, new projects. Some of them are ongoing projects and others don't. The first one, this um, digital application for smart tourism, it's an application that we are going to see uh, in few in the next slides. Also, the forgotten village, lost memories, rescue, enhancement, and the new set in Sierra Morena. This is a local call. And well, remote sensing applied uh, virtual and uh, artificial intelligence and virtual reality applied to archaeological, to demographic, etc., etc. Well. The first project on which uh, you can see a, an application, a transfer of the knowledge obtained in Proximo 1 is this one. It's uh, an APP for mobile uh, devices, tablet or mobile phone, on which uh, we tend to include, no, to, to focus on, on an inclusive manner, no? taking into consideration the persons with uh, cannot see or cannot hear perfectly or have any problem to walk. No? 
In this case, as I say, the, we will use the information or the data obtained from Proximo project, and also we combine with aerial photography, auto photography made by drones, thanks to the possibility to clearly or to, to obtain a very high detail of the archaeological remains. Also, 3D models done during the development of the project. No? Also, in this case, as we are trading to, to recuperate uh, ancient communication road no, from different, uh, that between different population areas, we decide to, to use uh, the most common use uh, least cost path, but, but taking into account the ex calorie expenditure, the minimum calorie, calorie expenditure. In this case, this is the, the them generate in order to calculate the route. This have a sense because we use this the, the proposed road by, uh, by the software in order to one focus our research in a concrete area to try to identify the ancient roads and also thinking in the possible theories that could make the route so in the way to optimi optimize uh, the the routes no here of course, this, this APP will be very important because then will be the base on which other project will, uh, will include the, the provide information. Regarding with the methodology, in this case, we, we did uh, aerial, uh, we analyzed satellite imagery, concretely analyzed the NDVI index in order to focus, to try to identify a new uh, ancient trace. As you can see here, I, I don't know here, I don't know if you see this line and this one. These are the rest of ancient roads. This uh, purple one is those provided by this software. So we have to just simply focus around this line. And we think that these evidence are evidence of road, but we must go to the field and to contrast this information. Also, LiDAR data, this is uh, a very important complement in this case. Also here you can see the, the proposed road by the GIS software and the, the, the elements identified near from the from this road. Also, it's historical photography. At mid-19th in Spain there were, were made an American flight, CGB, and it's provided a very high detail information over the, the area. And lastly, as I said, archaeological prospection. Also, this actually at the moment this APP is under embargo because we are working on it, but as you can see the combination of the different elements of each techniques allow us to have a very clear comprehension about a modern history period, about a history or a period that normally doesn't use these, these techniques. Well, regarding this project, Forgotten Village, Lost Memory, Rescue and Enhancement of the New Settlement in Sierra Morena, it's an ongoing project. Just, and this is one of the, I say most of the classical ones. Uh, I use, we use the text, the written text and cartography. But also what we want to do with this, this is a population from the end of the 18th century also. But uh, we try to, to rescue an enhancement this, this area. As you can see, there are, you cannot see anything, no? But we propose here um, also an inter and multidisciplinary approach, as you can see. Here, of course, data, LiDAR data in this case, provide a very interesting information just simply with, with the first analysis. Also, we combine with multispectral um, imagery, Sentinel A2 historical imagery, archaeological prospection, and geophysics. In this case, what we want to do also is, during the archaeological prospection, to clearly to pinpoint each archaeological remains, its pottery shared, metal, something like that, because what we want is to locate and to relate the, each archaeological object with the possible structures that we could identify on this. The main aim to that also to Turing's APP and Turing's application. Well, remote sensing and artificial intelligence and virtual reality applied to demographic pattern and landscape. It's a project from the Spanish National Call. 
Oh, and the idea, as you can see here, is the identification and description of remote sensing characteristic of already known a newly discovered archaeological site. What we want to do is to extract the spectral signature of archaeological site and then to try to identify this signature over the territory. No? To do that, uh, we, uh, we will do a comparative study between Sierra Morena and Reggio Calabria. Because Reggio Calabria, at the end of the 18th century, with the, so, with the aforementioned earthquakes, a lot of population must be changed and must be translated to other areas. No? So the idea is the, the foundation of new population on this area. So we want to compare these both areas. But if, this is not the unique objective. The formulation through application of catenets, holistic approach of thematic cartography of the Sierra Morena and Reggio Calabria region that will shed light on spatial distribution patterns, helping especially the majority of the project that we have here uh, is just not only for historical purpose, but also for conservation and to aim to foster uh, conservation policy, conservation policies with local administrations. No? So also we want or we would like to promote increasing tourism, business and employment through both regions. So the idea to break, not to break frontiers between science and citizens. Well, and regarding the methodology, this is a, a very complex one. Here, as you can see, the, the base, of course, the text, the historical text, and cartography, historical cartography, and with some drone made photography to create a historical context to see concretely where we are. Then the uh, word packet is specifically uh, designed to extract the information from remote sensing data using SAR, LIDAR, aerial photography, and then also sedimentology. The idea is to combine all this information into a JIT software that will allow to clearly uh, define, define the spectral signature and also uh, by applying artificial intelligence to analyze the complete territory and the communication route between each archaeological site. After that, we, uh, we try to create, to make a, a virtual reconstruction of the area with all the data obtained. Well, this, the last one, uh, this is the most strange process, project that I say is a Spanish call, with it is focus on ecological and digital transition calls. So I think that I have, I must to explain a little bit the, the call because it is very, very strange. And initially, doesn't have nothing to do with history, unless with modern history. Well, the idea is to promote research activities, I mean, at ecological transition and digital transition. Also, applies to productive activities the protection of natural resources and the quality of the life for individual and societies as a whole. Project will be oriented toward generating scientific knowledge, developing and technology or supporting policies in areas such as urban agenda and education, agriculture and tourism. Also, so supporting policies that are terms that I talked previously. And the digital transition will provide significant support for the ecological transition, must be inclusive, sustainable, promoting territorial and social cohesion. These, those are all terms that I talked before. And um, what we thought when we, when we read this presentation, this, this call, well, uh, we thought, well, we can use the cultural heritage, in this case, modern cultural heritage, to analyze how climate is affecting the conservation and how we can propose measures to palliate this problem, the, this climate problem around an archaeological site. Also, we can promote uh, tourism, but a, sust a sustainable tourism, like the creation of a digital model by including them into, uh, into the previous APP, APP that I said before. No? These, those are the, the objectives that I'm going to, to pass very briefly. And this also the methodology. In this case, also, as you can see, we will 
uh, analyze existing archaeological data, as LIDAR1, SAR data, public aerial orthophotography. The idea is to create a thematic cartography of the archaeological site in an area and then relate this archaeological site with climate condition. Then the idea is to create a fieldwork on which other kind of researchers, such as restorer, geologists, uh, topographers, something like that, work together to document the presence of the illness inside the, the archaeological remains, in this case, modern history ones. So the idea at the end is the creation of an HBIN and historical building information modeling that will allow to document the history of this archaeological site, the uh, illness and the proposed solution for that. At the end, we will have a complete catalog to provide information to administration, to conservation, to train conservation policies and future research campaigns. Well, this project also allow us to create a very interesting uh, tools for diffusion. This just simply with the creation of a 3D model for analyze the illness, we have, uh, we can make a video, a very impressive video that for people is very, uh, the, very interesting, no? because the majority of people would like to see nice images, no? And then this, this last one, another project on which you can record you can provide the advantage of this methodology for diffusion. Well, that's all. Thank you very much for your attention.